Hello, I'm Doug Musio. This is City Talk. Albany is broken. He wants to fix it, and he's already started. And he's here to tell us what needs fixing and what the fixings are. He's Tom Swazi, Nassau County Executive, who is seeking his second term as the Democratic County Executive of Nassau. He is an historic Democrat, taking over what was once the most Republican-dominated county in the nation. Tom, welcome. Thanks for having me, Doug. I appreciate it. Talk to me about the 2001 election. This is truly a watershed election, and we'll talk further about it. Go ahead. I became the uh, first Democrat with a Democratic legislature in Nassau County since 1917. Uh, people were so fed up with the one-party Republican machine politics in Nassau County that uh, they threw the bums out. But they, I mean, and this machine was more powerful than the classic Democratic machines. I mean, I'm a political scientist, you know. They talk Machines about the, are urban, forget it. They you talk about the, the Chicago suburbs. Democrats, the Chicago right. Democrats, and the Nassau County Republicans. Okay, so Nassau County in 2001, uh, describe the state of the county from your obviously biased perspective. Nassau, forget about biased. Okay, go ahead. The Nassau County government was rated the worst-run county in the United States of America by the Maxwell School of Public Policy at Syracuse University. No, they studied the top 40 counties in the country, said it was the worst-run county in the country. Economy's booming all over the United States of America. Federal government's in great shape. State government's in great shape. Everyone's in great shape back in the late 1990s. And Nassau County is lowered to one step above junk bond status and has massive deficits. So the state puts in place a control board to say we're going to take over the county government unless you fix up the problems. And you, your message is what? My message is... I can do it because I've done it. I was the mayor of the city of Glen Cove. I was a, a And you were the youngest, then you were reelected four times. There's a lot of youngest things here. Yeah, right. I, but, I, but more important than being the youngest right. is I'm a lawyer and a CPA. Uh -huh. I had managed a failing municipality and turned it around. And I had the experience to turn around a failed municipality in Nassau County. Okay. And I took a two point something billion, two point two billion dollar government, worst run county in the country. Uh, one step above junk bond status and turned it around. Okay, and then you have a Democratic legislature as well. Now, that's the only one. Let's talk about the larger issues that you and I had talked about earlier, and that is the, you know, the Democratic takeover of the suburbs, the suburbs becoming bluer, if you will. And we saw it in Nassau County, Suffolk County, Westchester County, and statewide. Talk about the changing political landscape here. Well, you know, the world has been changed on its head here in New York State in that typically the suburbs were Republican, New York City was Democratic, and New York State was Democratic as a whole. Now you've got a Republican governor, a Republican mayor in name in New York City, and you've got Democratic county executives in Nassau, Suffolk, and Westchester. The world's been changed on its head. Now, now, now you guys are the establishment. What do you do differently than your Republican predecessor? I mean, you speak for yourself, obviously. Yeah, there's a big difference in that, you know, we don't run everything based upon taking care of your buddies and giving out jobs based upon politics instead of based upon performance. And we've taken this massive deficit in the county, balanced every budget, had a surplus every year, and went from one step above junk bond status to having an A ranking by Moody's, Fitch and Standard & Poor's for the first time in over 15 years. I've, I'm the only municipality in the whole country, the whole country, that got 10 bond upgrades, three from Moody's, uh, three from Standard like & Poor's, an and four from Fitch. Love. Yeah, Excellent. I have an account, right. <laughs> I mean, come on. I mean, this is what an accountant's supposed to do. Well, you know, it's, it's more important than just being an accountant. It's, you know, because the politicians, I say, I'm doing a great job. My opponents say, you stink. I say, I'm great. You, say, you stink. You're great. I stink. Blah, blah, blah. No, public doesn't know who to believe. Here we have independent financial analysts looking at the county saying we're in the strongest shape we've been financially in over 15 years. Government services be being provided better, more efficiently, more of No them. question about it. We're providing better services than ever, ever before, despite the fact that we did a five-point program. Cut the workforce to the smallest it's been in 30 years. Cut $100 million in waste, fraud, and abuse. Cut concessions from my friends in labor. Uh, cut our borrowing in half. 
and did a property tax increase my first year in office, but I haven't raised them for two years in a row. It's going to be three years in a row now. Okay. Now, we, we don't invite Nassau guys onto City Talk. Right. So we need well, to, I appreciate we, it. There's a big lift for you. I appreciate and, it. You know, this is tough, you know, because we always had disdain for guys from the <laughs> But this Albany not working and you fixing it. Talk to us about what got, what, what got you at that moment where you flung open the window, said, I'm mad as hell and I'm not going to take it anymore. Explain the breaking We point. were going through this crisis in Nassau County. What the, financial set, crisis. Set the time. Financial crisis, 2002. I'm the county executive of Nassau County. I've got to do all these draconian things, the workforce reduction, battle with my friends in labor, cut the borrowing, all the stuff that we had. To and do. this hurts. And it hurts. It's tough stuff. It's tough decisions to make. And uh, I go to Albany, and I'm trying to get help from these guys to, to, to get a piece of legislation passed. Won't do it. Democrats, I had won a, a Democratic primary, so the Democrats were mad at me because the guy I ran against was the chairman of the Democratic Party in the primary out in Nassau, and he was an assembly person. And the Republicans are mad at me because I'm a Democrat, so I've got a hard time. And the, pub, and the public interest is nowhere to be seen. No, forget it. Forget about the policy. I don't want to be, don't be naive. Forget about the policy. Uh, so I try and, you know, I'm doing, I'm, I'm working to get this thing passed. I can't get any, can't get the first base, no matter what I do. I got the editorial boards are with me. The control boards with me. The rating agencies are with me. The, the good government groups are with me, but I can't get the politicians in Albany to pay attention. So that's one problem. Second problem is. Oh, wait, what relationship do you have with your local state assemblymen and senators? You know, some are okay. Some are not so good. We'll spend the whole show on no, it. Okay, no, let's not bother. Go. So then I look at the, uh, you know, I solved the fiscal crisis in the county. 2003, we started to get our heads above water. 2004, we really started to get in great shape. But 2003, end of 2003, I'm looking at a four-year plan. And I see that the problems that I'm in control of were okay. But the expenses related to unfunded state mandates are going through the roof. And we have no say over them. Medicaid's growing by 15% a year while I'm cutting everything else. As a matter of fact, by the end of 2004, my salaries were $45 million less than the day I took office. But Medicaid was $90 million more than the day I took office. And this is all the result of state rent. State mandates. Right. And, 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 I, and I look further, and I find three things that are related to each other. Number one, local taxes in New York State, not just Nassau County, Suffolk County, not just New York City, all in New York State. Local taxes in New York State are 72% above the national average. The highest local taxes in the country, mainly because the state passes laws at the state level, says we have to do stuff at the local level, but doesn't give us the money to pay for it. You that's should no, live in New Jersey. That's but number one. Well, they're, they're, up, they're, they're lower than New York State. Oh, the next highest state is Connecticut. Us. They're 20% above the national average. Oh, good. Na New York State is 72% above the national average. Okay, so there's a direct... Wait, go ahead. Make, go ahead. Make the case. Number two. Rated the most dysfunctional legislature in the United States of America. You know how many times I've said the word dysfunctional related to the state in this forum? It's Come not on. me. It's New York no, University, no. Brennan Center, it's right. not just you. It's it everybody. Is. Number three... The most important factor of them all, which causes all of our problems, I believe, is that in the past 20 years, there have been over 2,500 re-election campaigns for state senate and state assembly in New York State. And in those over 2,500 races over that 20-year period, only 34 incumbents have been defeated. Now, how many have died or gone to jail? More than that, probably. Bob, no, without, definitely more than that. that question, yeah, so, go ahead. So the problem that exists is, if there's no competition in politics, if it's one party or if it's just the Democrats in the Assembly and just the Republicans in the State Senate, and no matter wh whether you do a good job or a bad job, you're getting reelected anyway, what's the incentive to make the tough decisions to deal with the local taxes, to deal with the CFE case here in New York City, to deal with the MTA, to deal with the, uh, the ballooning costs of Medicaid? What's the incentive if... God, you got my blood pressure up. Come on, I'm here every day. You're making me crazy. I pay taxes. Not enough because of the commuter tax, but we won't go there at all. Uh, Keep I'll talk going. about it. Keep going. So the reality is, is that politics doesn't work. The same as the free market economy doesn't work unless there's competition. If you do a good job, you get reelected. If you do a bad job, you lose your job. So you get this totally concretized incumbency. How do you blow it up? Well, what I said is let's challenge one Democrat in the Assembly and one Republican in the State Senate. I'm a Democrat. I only support Democrats. So it's a primary for the Democrats in the Assembly. It's a Democrat against a Republican in the state senate right. and i picked a assembly race that i would challenge the incumbent 
uh, out in Nassau County, and I picked three state Senate races where I would challenge the incumbent Republican state senator. Does this not make you pretty unpopular with whole bunches of people? Yes. <laughs> who, 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 who does it make you unpopular with, and who does it make you popular with? Well, the, well Let's start unpopular first. It's unpop- a longer list. Politicians. Makes me, you know, people who think politics is about politicians are mad at me. People who think politics is about the people are happy that I'm doing it. So when it comes to, so what happens? I do this. The first thing that happens is my lobbyist that I've hired to represent me in Albany. Fires you. Fires me. Right, I love it. I'm supposed to Tell fire. Tell the story. I'm, well, you know, your vendor, your lobbyist is your vendor, right? So you're right. supposed to hire or fire them. So who's your lobbyist? Pat Lynch used to be chief of staff to, to Shelly Silver. Right. Says, we can't work for you anymore. I was like, Why? <laughs> She says, you can't do what you're doing. I said, but you're working for me. She says, oh, not anymore. You're fired. <laughs> you're not big enough. You're, you're fired. fired. Get you're out fired. of here. So uh, she said later on, it would, be bad. it would be bad for business for her to work for us. Then Shelly uh, Silver, who... Uh, well, wait, do you have any allies in this at all? Well, I have the people. I have no, I mean, in, good in, government in group. a political establishment. Uh, local, Anybody? No, not really. Local, I, local people. All, the they, candidates they, are supported. Uh, but so, everybody else is running away from you. Oh what? yeah, I was, or, or, I was, you know they gave you in some kind when it of comes to poli- scope. When it comes to politics, okay, you're finished. No, privately, everybody and their brother would come up to me. You're doing the right thing. Keep up the good job. You know, Does, but, I, I, but doesn't I, that tick you off even more? Better they should just be, you know, knuckleheads. Yeah, well, that's part of life. I mean, okay, that's politics. I'm, so, I'm not I'm naive so. either. No, no, no. I mean, okay, I'm a, go ahead. I'm an idealist without illusions. I, I recognize, you know, I want to make the world a better place, yeah. but I'm not going to yeah, be. Yeah, no, there's, there's an element of pragmatism. And we'll talk about that when we talk about the abortion, uh, uh, your contribution to it. But keep going. So, so I, I run the race. So you know, I get excluded from the Democratic convention as a delegate, which is absurd. Uh, that was the best. I've been a delegate for the. I've been going to conventions for the past twenty years. That was the best. I've been a delegate for the past three. Now, conventions. did you realize that they were punishing you? Oh yeah. Oh, wasn't that serious? It was that obvious. I mean, come on. That was obvious. But I, I, mean, I ended up going to the convention anyway. I was because I raised money for Kerry, and I got better tickets than a lot of other people at the oh, convention. Please. So you, so you're an outcast. You're ostracized. Yeah. No. It's okay. So what happened? Talk about Michelle. the result of the election. So I won. So we got to move on. I, I beat the Democrat in the primary, and everybody started talking about reform after that. When I started talking about, when, after yeah, I won the primary, they, reform became the big topic. Yeah, excuse me, but they're, they're, talk, I make an obscene hand gesture, we, but I won't. We made a couple good things happen. I got the cap on Medicaid growth for both the city and for all the counties in New York State. And I got, we got the budget passed on time. Not just me. I mean, this is a whole bunch of people who are involved in that. All different gov- good government groups, editorial boards, everybody. It was a tipping point, I believe, that took place. Interesting. So the uh, and we beat, and is it going to stay tipped? Because it could tip back. Well, we beat, we beat a Republican state senator up in Syracuse, right? Uh, uh, through the Fix Albany campaign, along with the Senate Democrats, right? So we beat one Republican in the Democratic Assembly, one Republican in the state Senate, uh, and people started talking about reform, right? Now I believe they, they were talking about reform, and they did. It was a monumental <laughs> to pass the budget on time. That's oh, a big okay. deal. Okay, okay. That's a big deal. Okay. Getting a cap on the growth of Medicaid at the local level was a very big okay. deal. The good, the, the, the perfect shouldn't be the now, enemy of the good. Okay, right. I get it. That's right. The price of perfection is bankruptcy. Yeah. Thank you. So the we problem. Have, go ahead. The problem is you're going to say we went to the same school. We did. We didn't, <laughs> we're not going to go there. So the next thing was that. Uh, uh, You'll now have elections in 2006. So anything that started this year, they can't get rid of it in 2006 because everybody's going to be running for re-election. And reform, I think, will be the big yeah, topic of the pick, 2006 yeah, elections. But they're going to pick off two more. I mean, I didn't know. It may be more than two. But you need allies. Where do you get allies? People that are interested in reform. How do you do it? You need a mass movement of some type. You need a people's grassroots yeah. movement. Now, what do you? What? Why is there always a tipping point? Because the message resonated. Oh, Albany's broken. Stuck. The people believe that Albany is broken. There is, people are upset about their high local taxes, highest local taxes. And they were upset with the fact that they didn't have a state budget for their school budgets and they were going into June and they didn't know what to do. So if you can keep the connection between the dysfunction in Albany and the high local property taxes. Yeah, but this ain't enough. You got to do more. Well, you have to what else it, are you going to do? But you have to run candidates to try and get them to run on the reform message. Term, I'm talking about structurally. Term limits? Well, I I've, mean, I've I'm hist- not a big fan. But I've historically been against term limits. But, and, but it's I've so said, bad. Pu- I've said publicly that if we do not succeed in the 2006 elections to change the culture and get redistricting, that I will look at the possibility of uh, Wait a minute. going for term limits Wait a in the minute. future. Change the culture and get redistricted. You're not going to get either of those. To explain, first of all, explain them, and then explain why you're not going to get. Okay, them. the problem that exists 
is that there's no competition. The right. reason there's no competition is the incumbents keep on winning. The right. reason the incumbents keep on winning is there is an Albany incumbent protection society where the Republicans protect the Democrats in the Assembly and the Democrats protect the Republicans in the state Through Senate. Through the districting, because the redistricting. each house districts its own they do, house. They, they, gerrymandering is a famous expression right. which designs, the, the, which happens everywhere in the country. Right. It's just gone over the, overboard here in, in, in New York. So that nobody even wants to run for these offices because right. you think there's no way you can win anyway. Right. Okay, go ahead. If you create a competitive system through redistrict redistricting, you'll solve all the other problems that exist because we have smart, good people in the legislature. So you, yeah, but you got to take it out of the legislature's hands. You got to do what we did in the city and have an independent, right. nonpartisan, forget about bipartisan. It's the only way it'll work. Because otherwise... And I mean, those are problematic, but come on, if you have any well, and, governmental agency. And you have people that are signing up now for this type of reform that are elected officials. This guy, oh, yeah. guy named Janaris, who's running for attorney general, yeah. who's an assembly person. He's got a whole redistricting program yeah. that he wants to yeah. do. Brodsky, who's running for attorney general, is also talking about reforms of, of different Albany things. The, Anybody who's running for higher office is now talking about reforms. And and you're mentioning the Democrat, we'll go back to electoral politics later on, but that uh, Democratic attorney general field's got some real good people in it. Yes, yeah, wonderful. Mean, it's Competition's good. Yeah, the more absolutely. competition there, you got absolutely. Andrew Cuomo, you got Mark Green, absolutely. you got okay. Brodsky, you got so, Janaris, so you got Denise What are the odds you get this, this independent district commission? Not on. The not, odds are totally against us. Right. But the odds were totally against me getting a Medicaid cap. The odds were totally against okay. getting the budget on, okay. on time. The odds were against me solving the fiscal crisis. And, the odds were against me getting and elected. And that doesn't work, term limits. Yeah. Now, the, the main things Fix Albany is going to be focused on right now you know, it's a little bit of a, a, a downtime for us because I've got to focus on my re-election campaign for county executive. Right. So county, I've got to figure and out. And the focus. status of that race, from what I understand, is you've got to run as if you're going to lose, but you ain't going to lose. Well, I'm going to work as uh, I'm going to work as hard as I can right. as though I can lose. I'm going to raise the money. I'm going to go out to every event I can go. You put a people of more than 10 people in a room, I'll show up to make a speech. And I'm going to run on my record of having turned Nassau County around as we went from the worst run county in the country to being recognized as one of the most dramatic fiscal turnarounds in the nation. Okay. Talk uh, more about Albany. But there are three things I'm looking to focus on. Go ahead. One is the redistricting. Right. Two is uh, local taxes, mainly property taxes, being too high. How do you ameliorate that without juggling around Unfunded the Unfunded the... state mandates okay, being pushed okay, down okay. to school districts, okay. towns and villages, county and the city if, of New York. if those mandates were still to exist, but they were funded by the state, they would have tax implications. Maybe not property tax implications, but, you know, income, Income tax is progressive. Sales. Okay, no, 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 property no. Property okay. tax is regressive. No, okay. And if the state was responsible for paying their own bills, they would take more effort to try and make them more efficient and save money. We the like bottom, it. The bottom line is, if I say to you, let's go to dinner tonight, you say, great, I'll go to dinner. I say, where do you want to go? You say, let's go to Le Cirque. I say, Le Cirque, Le Cirque is too expensive. You say, you only have to pay for 25% of the cost. We'll pick up the, you get these other guys to pick up the rest of the cost. Then you say, okay, let's go to Le Cirque. Oh, the state passes all these expensive programs because they're not paying for them. They're making us pay for them at the local level. MTA, for example. They defund the MTA. But why do you MTA. suck take them in the first place? It's too tempting. It's like the drug. Say it again now. Why do you take, why do you take the, the money through? Oh, it's... They mandate it. Yeah, they pass mandate. a law okay. that you have okay. to do this. So it's not discretion. You're not talking about any discretion. You're talking about straight mandate. What the state okay. has done. Okay, no, I, I get it. The state has decreased the income taxes while increasing the programs. How do you do that? You get someone else to pay for the expenses. <laughs> MTA, they cut the state funding. They increased everybody's fares. Medicaid, they increased the programs. They, it caused the local property taxes to go up. It goes on to school district, the CFE case. Right. State mandates. Right. Who's going to pay for right, all this stuff? Right. One of the interesting things that happened during this period is my mother-in-law has a house in Delaware County, and I know the Delaware County executive. And what's very interesting is there's a real commonality of interest between and among all the counties. I mean, you could do a 62-county coalition without any dissenters. No, no, the, the, co the county Now, is all this viable? I mean, the, we're, or, or are you... St Listen, it seems the, not very... The practical politics are is that if you want to change Albany, it's the Democrats and the Republicans in the legislature that are both to blame. Right. It's very hard for a Democrat to fight with other Democrats. Right. It's very hard for a Republican to fight with other Republicans. That's hard. I, don't, okay. I, I recognize it's very okay. difficult to okay. do. You need to make it that it's so politically popular that everybody recognizes this is in their political interest to fight for this. Okay. Let's talk about political interest and fighting. And turn to the issue of abortion, which you have in the recent months staked out interesting ground. I mean, the Washington Post story is called Centrist Courage on Abortion, Times Editorial Middle Ground on Abortion, uh, Newsday Swazi's Abortion Action Louder Than Words. 
Talk to us about you, a Catholic politician, abortion, the church, public policy. Go to it. For 30 years, we've been fighting about this in, in, the, in the public sphere since Roe versus Wade. And everybody yells and screams at each other at the dinner table, in the halls of Congress. And it's been the same debate for 30 years. And I said, listen, I don't want to engage in the same debate that it's always been. Let's not talk about the morality and the legality. Let's talk about practical implications. How can we reduce the number of abortions? And how can we do Which is so a generally assumed goal by everyone. I think everybody, right. whether, okay. whether, whether, whatever side of the right. camp you're on, okay. I buy people it. say, most people I think believe abortion should remain legal, they just wish there weren't so many of them. Okay. So the question becomes, how do you accomplish that objective without uh, 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 pushing away either extreme of the debate in the process because most people are really in the middle. And so I proposed three different things that we could do in county government and county government's appropriate because we are like the city of New York are responsible 40% of our budget is for health and human services. Right. So I said let's do three things. Number 1, let's spend money on education to try and prevent unintended pregnancies in the first place. Which again has universal appeal. Right. There's, there's, there's two camps. One wants to talk about abstinence based. The other one right. wants to talk about contraception based. Oh well, we have to based. fight about something. Right. But that's, that fight is okay. not as is not as angry. And it's not as, as pernicious. The, as, the right. as the abortion okay. debate. So, but let's, it's there. Go but on. let's let's fund educational efforts to prevent unintended pregnancies. We can agree on that. Mm -hmm. Let more unites us than divides us. Number two, let's fund uh, uh, homes for single mothers. If a woman's pregnant, facing an unintended pregnancy, let's not judge her. Let's instead see if we can support her, and if she chooses, whatever her choice is, we'll support her choice. And right. Home for single mothers is the way of doing that, so that there's housing available, there's right. daycare available. Right. It provides there's job them options. There's, there's, there's a real there's, choice. There's, there's daycare available. There's job training available. And the third is, everybody says they're for adoption. In Nassau County, uh, we have about uh, uh, 3,500 to 4,000 abortions a year. But when I started looking at this, I found out there's only 300 adoptions a year. Now, everybody says they're for adoption. Why aren't there more adoptions? And when there are adoptions, they're typically, in our personal experience, we hear about families, when they adopt someone, they adopt someone from a foreign country somewhere mm -hmm. because it's perceived as being so much bureaucracy and so much expense and so impossible to adopt children here mm -hmm. uh, locally. Right. So I said, let's spend some money to try and reduce the bureaucracy and expense related to adoption. So I said, listen. Let's stop fighting with each other and let's talk about practical terms as to how we can reduce the number of abortions. Education, homes for single mothers, and less bureaucracy and expense in adoption services. Reaction to it. Well, first of all, your personal and public policies on, on, on the issue. The bottom line is, is I, I'm not going to do what other politicians have said. It says, you know, I, I personally feel this, but this is my public position. Right. I'm going to say, listen, I think we should reduce the number of abortions. These are ways to do it. And that's, Very instrumental. That's, that's my position. Okay. I'm a, I'm a practical person. Okay. I'm an idealist without illusion. Okay, good. I want practical ideas. And if we can agree on that, let's do it. Right. Let's do it. Okay. Let's stop fighting with each other. And, and whether you're pro-choice, you're pro-life, you're this camp or that camp, we can all agree on these concrete steps. What I found interesting was the reaction of the Archbishop of the Rockville Center Diocese, William Murphy. He's just a bishop. He's not an oh, archbishop. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I <laughs> elevated him, and I, don't, maybe, I, I didn't intend to. Uh, in terms of being himself politically savvy while at the same time holding his ground. I mean, he gave you space in a way that other members of the Roman Catholic hierarchy haven't given other pals. Can you talk about that, what that meant, what that was? It was really a tremendous surprise, and uh, I was very grateful for it. And Explain what it was. What it was is he came out and said, listen, uh, the church is not going to change its position on abortion. But Swazi's speech is very helpful because he's talking about reducing the number of abortions and practical ways to do it. And, you know, that's a big thing. I mean, Catholic politicians who are Democrats, who have histor uh, historically been pro-choice, which, you know, I I'm saying that abortion should remain safe and legal. You know, the, you've heard this expression, abortion should be safe, legal, and rare. People talk about the safe and legal portion. They haven't talked about how to make it more rare. Okay. So uh, historically, uh, the church has not supported uh, their position. And the fact that the bishop would come out and say this was a helpful step that Swazi's taking was really a big thing for me. Uh, so, and at the same time, you had Planned Parenthood right. saying that it was a, a, a good effort. They were unhappy with the uh, abstinence-based portion of the education right. program, even though we're supporting artificial contraception as well. 
that was a big step that I had both sides saying this is a good step so we forward. So we can talk across the aisle, but in a sense we can't govern across the aisle. What can we expect in the last? But we've got 15 seconds. What do I what do I expect in the next round of elections? Expect that uh, people are gonna, looking for people who are going to make changes to fix people's problems instead of just talking about uh, the same old political stuff. <laughs> Good. Simple as that. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Thank you. You're welcome back. Appreciate it. When sailors converge on exciting New York City for Fleet Week, the first thing on their mind is, let's have a relay race. Let it run, let it run. Now they're going to pivot right here on their way back. It's kind of like a reality show, don't you think? Amazing military race. The amazing military race, I like that. Um, the C Factor. The C Factor. Or how about... Are there any special exercises you do to train for a relay race? Make sure you get plenty of sleep, like 12 hours before the night, you know? Yeah, I'm, I'm with you. Especially if you had a lot to drink the night before, you know? Okay. Let's see, show us. What does it say? It says, uh, Chris Heverer, 77, Hop Hog United. I hate to tell you this, kid, but you're actually in the Army now. <laughs> Things cool. being what they are, you've enlisted. Cool. What else are you going to do while you're here in New York? Mm, probably shop and party. Boy, you see all kinds of ships here at Fleet Week. It's terrific. Ah! Every that must be the USS Rhode Island. Kidding, kidding. We have nothing to fear but fear itself. Or being a wax figure in 80 degree weather. I'm melting, I'm melting. What a world, what a world. Oh. Eleanor. All right. Who won? A huge round of applause for all of our runners. Who won? The Porter. The Porter won? I think so. You think so? Yeah, we won. They jump in. Yeah? Yeah. The Porter right, won. Guys, the Porter. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The USS Porter, the USS Porter is the big winner. Not only is the USS Porter the big winner, we have prizes for you guys, because what would being a winner be without getting your official CUNY TV tote bag? It was worth it, wasn't it? It was worth it because you get CUNY TV tote bags. There you go. And to all the losers, like the Donald would say, you're court-martialed. Barry Mitchell for CUNY TV.